Let's see. Let's see. We've got Ian. Ian says, good job in the debate. Thank you, Ian. I was surprised with Wolf. I thought he was a serious Marxist and would defend real socialism, not just work a co-op socialism. The problem with defending real socialism is you can't. You can't. They've learned that. They've learned that socialism has failed when it's associated with statism in any kind of way, uh, in any kind of level. It fails, and they can try to project Denmark or Sweden as socialist, but they know that the Danes and the Swedes will object. So they're stuck. They want to be revolutionary. They want to have a vision. They want to have something to get you excited about. And yet the old style Marxist socialism tied up with a dictatorship of the proletarian and, and manifest in the 20th century in some forms of statism doesn't actually allow them to do it because it's an unmitigated failure. There's no way they can talk themselves out of that, right? Uh, one of the things that uh, I, sh I meant to mention this, one of the things that really shocked me, I was surprised. I had heard, again, because Gene Epstein said it in his debate. Gene Epstein during the debate said something like, well, we know that you, Richard Wolf, denounce the, the, the murder and the, and the deaths in the Soviet Union. You've written a book about it. So I assumed from that that uh, Richard Wolf was, was denounced Mao and denounced the communist bloodbaths in all these places. And, and that, that, so I was actually surprised when he mentioned, uh, you know, how wonderful Mao Zedong was. And the extent to which, in this debate, he was an apologist for the murders in China. Now, think about this. This is not controversial. This is not me going out on some limb and, you know, conspiracy theory. This is standard history today. Is that Mao Zedong, either through in both through incompetence and through malice, his policies resulted in the death of anywhere between 40 to 80 million people. 40 to 80 million people. I posted a couple of articles on this in Twitter, I think, yesterday. 40 to 80 million. I mean, he is, of the three most vicious murderers of the 20th century, he is the worst in a sense of numbers. Now, maybe it's a smaller percentage of the population, but God, that becomes pretty, pretty disgusting calculus. You know, uh, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, of all of them, Mao Zedong is the most murderous. And I, you know, wasn't really prepared to push that because I couldn't imagine that anybody would deny it. it, it is a, it's so well documented, not just by Americans. It's documented with, with uh, documents that were smuggled out of China in the 90s in terms of Chinese academics and Chinese researchers, the stuff they discovered in the vaults when things freed up a little bit. And while Mao is revered by people who don't know and don't understand, but the academics in China, the people who are researchers, the people who, they know what he did. They don't revere him. They revere him for political reasons, but they don't actually revere him. They know how incompetent. I mean, it's like Deng Xiaoping. Deng, by the time he became president, he used to be Mao's right-hand man. He has lots of blood on his hands. But by the time he became, you know, the, basically the, the, the authoritarian in charge of China, he knew how monstrous Mao was. But he had to keep up the facade in order to keep the party in power. So uh, Mao is revered by the, the ignorant because they don't teach how much of a monster he was. But for an, um, for an American academic, I don't care if you're a Marxist or not. For an American academic not to know and to reject or deny 
suggests evasion on such a scale that you have to say this guy's evil. This guy is willing to go along with the motor of 80, potentially up to 80 million people. 80. 80 million. It, it, it's, it blows the mind. And then, for people to treat this guy as civilized. Now, I know I'm never going to debate Richard Wolf again because after what I'm saying here and after the debate, he'll never agree to debate me again. But to treat this guy as civilized, as a civilized adversary, I, I would never get on stage with him again after his willingness to defend Mao Zedong. It's, he, it's murderous. This is what evil looks like. This is what evil looks like. So um, anyway, that, that did surprise me. That did shock me. And you can look it up. You can just, you can look it up and you can find from the 1990s in particular articles that will just curl your butt. I mean, they will, I mean, you know, the, 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 the amount of murders uh, during, the, during, I mean, the Great Leap Forward, tens of millions of people died, and then the millions who died during the Cultural Revolution, uh, from which Deng also suffered, because Mao sent him to be re-educated in the countryside, but, but the amount of people who were murdered, uh, I mean, there were the stories of cannibalism, because they were both starving and in a murderous rage, um, it's it just astounding what the, what the Red Guards on the behest of Mao did, and that anybody, anybody, never mind somebody with a job at a university, would defend their actions is beyond sick. Imagine if somebody defended Hitler. How long would he have a job? Imagine somebody defended Hitler. How long would anybody debate him? How long would anybody be willing to appear on a stage with him? Just despicable, truly despicable. So, um, yeah, so it turns out, you know, uh, uh, Richard Wolf was not my, uh, my preference as a debating partner. I had uh, uh, suggested some other people to uh, the University of Pennsylvania. It turns out that all the other people I suggested, including Cornell West, who I thought, uh, who I think would have been an interesting debate and a much more challenging debate. I, I'm not sure how that would have gone. It would have gone very differently. But um, Cornell West wanted like, you know, what, uh, eight times more than <laughs> what uh, they ultimately paid. Um, uh, Stephanie Kelton, MMT, Stephanie Kelton wanted uh, also like four times. So uh, they were just way more expensive. And uh, Richard Wolf was willing to do this at, for whatever I was getting. And since I was getting something very reasonable in terms of the, what the students could pay, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it was something UPenn could, uh, could pull off. But I'm looking forward. I, I'd love to debate other socialists, other status, CRT, um, uh, you know, uh, postmodernists, whatever. Uh, I'm happy, uh, happy to debate Anybody out there uh, who, uh, who is uh, anybody out there who brings an audience, I, I'm, I have no interest in debating Joe Schmo. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening, you get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to uronbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, Subscribestar, Locals, and just making an appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.